a nuts and bolts question. Nuts and bolts of, of, of a practice. Um, in, in the beginning, you asked if people had felt loneliness <clears throat> and um, and how that's um, a word or a story that we over lie on to the isness of aloneness. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've noticed for myself that when I feel very alone, I think to my, I, I, I try to maybe do some meditation or focus on that idea and rewrite this alone feeling as, okay, well, let's use this feeling of loneliness as practice to feel the isness of being alone and somehow have that make me feel okay or make mm -hmm. me feel a feeling that I desire, which is lo love, so mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. However, I haven't found that to work very well so far. Mm -hmm. And um, I usually think to myself, well, maybe if I just got somebody in my life or some people in my life so that I didn't feel so acutely lonely, then I'd feel okay enough to start practicing on self-love mm -hmm. at that point. Um, so I guess my question is um, two, two parts. One is when I'm feeling the acute loneliness and you suggested this imagination, um, maybe I'm curious as to other, uh, other actions to towards self-love in, in, in the loneliness moments. Mm -hmm. And also, is seeking other to sort of fill that loneliness a distraction from using that loneliness to find self-love? It doesn't have to be, if you're aware of yourself in the meantime. Because other people are just another symbol to trigger the frequency that you wish to experience. So it can actually help in that sense, to change your frequency. But in the long run, if you're not learning from that, if you're not seeing that it's triggered within yourself, if you're not using them just as a symbol to trigger how to become more aware, how to realize more of the frequency that you experience when they show up, to see that it's happening within yourself, within your own consciousness immediately, and that they're just a symbol for you to say, ah, now I can allow myself to not feel lonely, or to feel some other state of being, but you're giving yourself permission. So anything, even you know, changing your environment to trade that frequency can at times be helpful. I would minimize that uh, because usually it becomes another drug chase. However, when it does happen, when it does show up and you do feel relief, oh, thank God that you're home or thank God that, you know, uh, or you're just calling up a body or whatever. If you're changing your environment to feel better, then do learn from it. Like, be really aware of what's happening there. So that in the future, you can trigger that frequency without needing to manipulate the environment or your field of perception. You're just instantly shifting or just instantly seeing the love that's there. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, the more you surrender to that aloneness, which happens the more tired you get of feeling lonely, feeling the story of loneliness, the more tired you are of pretending to be lonely, because you're never really lonely, but to pretend to be lonely, every story of loneliness is a pretend, pretending to be lonely. So the more you grow tired of that state of being, the more you really don't want that anymore, the more you'll surrender to your, into your aloneness and the more palpable it becomes. It's sort of it's like a blanket that you start to be sucked into. The blanket of aloneness, the vividness of isness. Aloneness is simply being. When you notice your aloneness, what you're noticing is your raw, naked being, without attributes, without entertainment. The more you surrender to that, by for a moment being tired of the entertainment because based on the entertainment you feel a lack when the entertainment is not there entertainment here being anything anything that entertains you can be hanging out with friends can be going to a movie whatever entertains you without that you may feel a lack at times so then it's helpful to be aware of whether that's an actual lack or whether that's simply because you've attached the frequency of love and passion and freedom with the particular form of entertainment that you feel now is lacking, thus I am lonely. It is still just pretending to be lonely and then when they're there, pretending not to be lonely. 
transcending both loneliness and unloneliness is simply being or aloneness. What you notice in your aloneness is the being that never leaves you. When you start to appreciate that, for the fact that it never leaves you, that it's always there, that it's vividly awake, present, comforting you, consoling you, the more aware you become of those hidden qualities, which are already there, they're simply hidden. The more you activate these by noticing that they're already there, that's how you realize something, simply notice what's already there. The more you uncover the now, the isness, just uncover it by genuine interest in the depths of that aloneness, that beingness. You only have that genuine interest in the depth of it when you're sick and tired of pretending to be dependent upon circumstances or upon the idea of loneliness or non-loneliness. When you're really tired of that, you'll naturally, your interest will naturally go to, okay, so what remains? If the entertainment isn't working out for me, whether it's there or it's not there, then what's the next step? How can I entertain myself on a deeper level? And then suddenly you start to become aware, you start to surrender to the aloneness that's simply here. And you drop your world view for a moment, your consciousness of other people, your ideas of other people, and all that remains, and what sort of is like it's expanding, it's like it's oh, becoming more palpable, more in your face, more here suddenly, it was already here, but you're making more obvious that which was already so obvious by simply surrendering to it. And again, like I said in the beginning, it's like marinating a chicken. The more you surrender into it, the more you uncover these hidden qualities of love and never being alone, always being connected, those kind of states that we long for, the ecstasies that we desire. The more we give ourselves to that which contains all of these hidden qualities, the more those will no longer be hidden. Does that make sense? It does. Is it too abstract? No. You asked for another way to evoke the love in the state of loneliness? Is that answered or are you still left with a so now what? No, it, it answers the question. I'm just wondering if it's going to work or not. Hmm. <laughs> Do you want it to work? Yep. Give yourself, capital S, some credit when you're in those moments. Like give it credit, give it credit, give it validity. When we're not giving it validity, we feel lonely. But the more credit we give our aloneness, our own presence, our own isness, our own existence, our sense, do you know what I'm talking about when I say existence, our sense of existence, our sense of being? You have the sense of being? You can recognize that? Yes. Just right now you're being here, right? You can notice that. It's always there. When you're alone, it's there. It's right here. It's always 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 here. Give more credit to that. Surrender more into that. Give yourself more to that. As if you're falling in love with yourself. Not the idea of yourself, but in a sense, falling in love with the absence of the idea of yourself. What remains there? The primordial idea of yourself, which is the isn't. It's God's idea or source's idea of you is that existence. And it is. And it is. And it is. All things are it because they are. Therefore, they are being. You are being. All are being. Does that make sense? Can you have a palpable physical sense of it? Even if just subtle, like a subtle sense of, ah, being here, presence, palpability, vividness, hereness. Is there a sense of that? A recognition of that? Definitely. Right. Fuck other people. Fuck being lonely. Fuck not being lonely. Fuck good company. Forget it. Pretend nobody was ever there to console you in the first place. What would remain if he would not even have the notion that there's other people to go to to console you? What if you'd forever be with other, without other people? What if he'd be on a planet without other people? He'd be the last man alive. Or let's say he'd be the first man alive. 
So he had no notion of, oh, disasters, everybody died except for me. You're the first man alive. No notion of other beings. You've never come upon a product. You've never come upon another human being. Ever. He don't know what that is. He don't know yourself in relationship to another physical body. You've never seen it before. You are all there ever is. You don't know any better. You only know the presence that is. And you give yourself to that fully. Without hope for other people. Because you don't know. There's no other people. You have no notion of it. Now that imagination may or may not work for you. But it's one possibility. Of many scenarios you can draw for yourself to set the stage for you to let go of the hope of other people consoling you, which leaves you with the only option left, which is to surrender or to fall in love with yourself. As long as there's hope, there's interest in that hope. As long as there's interest in that hope, you're not going to fully uncover yourself. Because you still associate more happiness with something out there. It's an association problem. It's a problem of misassociating yourself with others. That's what loneliness, the story of loneliness, comes from. From misidentifying yourself with others. Others are not yourself. Yourself is. That's where your joy is, but we've covered that up through our associations. Every association we have to somebody fulfilling us in some way is in a sense covering up the fact that we already have that quality innate within us. They just bring it out in us. That's why we're all here together, so that we can explore different themes and experience all kinds of frequencies and trigger that and also become aware of how we're covering it up so that in a more empowered way we own our own frequencies again as being an innate part of our own consciousness an innate ability to experience them of our own consciousness make sense it does too abstract no no i get it exactly if, if i think but if, if it's too say lovers were to go their separate ways and practice this and become 100% successful at it, it seems to me that there would be no need to be lovers or to have human interaction or if this self-love practice were... And the end of need is the start of celebration. Say it again? At the end of need is the start of celebration. Because you don't need anything. Need is a very heavy energy. <laughs> it's very heavy. It's in a sense moving away from your natural self, from the way things were intended. The original thought of creation is experiencing, expressing, and celebrating the unity of all of existence. The one being wanting to experience, express, and celebrate itself. As the original thought, why isness is. The only reason isness is, is to experience, express, and celebrate the source of that isness. And worrying about needing somebody and going into the thought forms that are, in a sense, very far removed from the original intention, is still a way of the original intention to experience, express, and celebrate itself. So it's still serving the one source. You're never out of service to the original intention. In fact, through those intensities, through those heaviness, through those shadows, through those dark alleys of consciousness. Those dark alleys we don't want to go into, but we do it all the time. Even though there's a bright alley on the other side, like just turn your head 180 degrees, and there's this, ah, the gates of heaven. But no, that dark alley I don't want to go into, let's go into it again and again and again and again and again. And so we're being of service in providing even greater catalyst, greater understanding, greater expression and celebration and understanding of the one life in its many forms. We're creating many different points of view of the one life that otherwise would not be available. So it's all good. In the end, like, you know, the creator is, is all good and happy with all of you, no matter where you go. It's like, ah, oh, thanks for celebrating me in this way. Ah, oh, thanks for celebrating me in this way. Thank you for expressing this in this way. Thank you for expressing me. Thank you for understanding me in this way. So there's all infinite ways to understand yourself. Every particular human life, and within the human life, infinite moments, are all points of view of experiencing the one through a different perspective. 
it's all service, it's all celebration, but it doesn't always have the felt quality of celebration. Until, more and more, we start to see the overarching principle that even that is service to then we start to see that even that is celebration. And so it becomes, since we're noticing it, since our attention is directed to the understanding that even the dark as well as the light are part of the one surface, the one celebration, the more we're aware of that, the more we actualize and realize it as our own direct experience. So our happiness becomes more stable, more transcendent, less dependent upon light or dark. So as a result, we become more light, but it's a light that's inclusive of the dark. It's the brightest light. It's the most unshakable light. The light that can be pushed away by darkness is not really light. So the full embrace, the full relaxation, the full surrender again and again gives rise to actualizing or realizing more of this natural state of yourself, capital S, your being. The original intention of experiencing, expressing and celebrating the one life, the one inseparable being. So the need doesn't have to be there. The need to be together doesn't necessarily have to be there. The need that is there is imagined. Anyway, it is imagined and anything can be imagined. So it's one option. To need somebody is one option. That's one role that we play. It's one game that we play. It's not necessary. It's not wrong. It's still, it's perfectly fine if you're okay with that and you're completely okay with that. And when you're feeling the lack of, and that is also imagined, and it's based upon the previous imagination of need. So the more you just are aware of this, the less power it has over you, whatever you may be. Does that make sense? It does. So it's still a lot of fun to have relationships in all kinds of ways. Brothers, sisters, friends, lovers. But it just gets a different quality more and more. A more an unshakability underneath it all. So the idea that we need each other, that we should need each other, otherwise there wouldn't be the fulfillment of a relationship, is sort of like the self-fulfilling prophecy. Because you imagine that you need somebody, and because of the need, you imagine that a relationship is going to fulfill that. Without the need, there's also not the need for the relationship. So the question like, but wouldn't the need for a relationship fall away without the need for a relationship? Of course. Why do you want there to be a need for a relationship? Only because you think you need a relationship. If you weren't raised with the idea that you need a relationship, you would also not have any romantic ideas about that. Or that the idea or the sense that that is something beautiful. I agree with that point of view. It is something beautiful. Nevertheless, it is a point of view. It's not the truth. Everything is beautiful. It's another point of view. Not the truth. You see what I'm getting at? The need for a relationship. Why? For a moment without all the romantic ideas, what is it really? It's so illusory. It's such an agreement between two minds. Nevertheless, there is a, you know, it can be very beautiful, a very beautiful energetical connection or a resonance or a gravitational pull that's there. Whoop in such a way that it locks into each other that we call it a relationship. But that's just what we call it. It's all an agreement, which is beautiful. It's an energetical agreement. And some are conceptual agreements. Now if we get rid of the conceptual agreements more and more, then we start to see the energetical agreement, which can still abide by some of the conceptual rules that we've made up in our society, or the ways that it expresses itself can still resemble that. But then it becomes freer, freer, more beautiful, more palpable, more alive. Because your sense of aloneness is no longer dependent upon that. Your sense of loneliness. You're not necessarily lonely without the other person. The loneliness has the ability to make room for the aloneness, which is actually very beautiful. Loneliness too is that aloneness. It is very beautiful. So again, it's about the transcendent quality that includes all experiencing. That says it's free more and more. I like it. Yeah? Yeah. Sweet. I think I get it. So see if you can really, as much as you want to fall in love or experience the love of somebody else, see if that same intensity, that same infatuation can be applied to your own presence. Because there's lots of things that are in common when you're, you know, especially when you're first falling in love with somebody, as we call it the infatuation period or something. 
you don't care about anything else anymore. Like you drop all the projects you were passionate about. Like you've completely fallen in love with this being and it's like, well, well, well. Everything else goes out the window. So there's complete sort of losing yourself, right? There's complete surrender. And it's many similar qualities, the period of falling in love. You're not aware of yourself as much. You don't care if people think you're crazy. You're dancing in a supermarket or whatever. Normally you wouldn't do that because you think other people might think something. But you're so fulfilled because you're in love with the idea of the other person, which you can put in between brackets, the idea of the other person. Really, you're just in love. The idea of the other person may have been the trigger. Really, what you're enjoying so much is being in love. Not with anybody, just in love. You're being in love. Your body doesn't recognize anybody. Your emotional body doesn't recognize the other person. There's just in love now. Can you have that infatuation toward yourself more and more? You can awaken that in yourself toward yourself more and more. So everything you desire out of a relationship, you can find in yourself. So then, usually that doesn't do it for people. Because, again, of the strength of the association with the other person, needing to be the source of our fulfillment. That romantic idea, which is beautiful, but it's just an idea. If I say you can experience anything that you desire from or within a relationship with another person, then why is that not sufficient for most people to go, ah, oh, all right, then I'm going to fall in love with myself right now. Why, does, why don't we do that? Why doesn't that happen immediately like that? So ask yourself, do you want the other person or do you want the quality of the state of being you are in when you're in love? If you'd have to make a choice, which one would it be? If it's the other person, then by all means, through imagination, choose that. But then see that if you choose the other person, you cannot have, in this imaginative theme that we're exploring now, if you choose the person, so their physical appearance, the color of their skin, the way they blink their eyes, uh, the things they say, but completely without the state of being, of being in love, you'll have just a person. And then see if that's really what you want. And if you realize that that is 0% of what you want, and that the state of being was actually 100% of what you want, then the misassociation of the state of being with the other person has more of a chance of dropping away, which allows you to be more excited about the statement. Anything you desire out of somebody else, you can find within yourself. Suddenly it's like, yes, why? Because now you know that you don't actually want another person. Now you know where to look. Now you know what you really desire. Does that make sense? So ask yourself, this is such a powerful question with anything. What is it that I really want? What is it that I really want? Get to the core of that. Because the moment you get to the core of that, you've already really found it. If you get to the core of what you really desire, that's the place where you immediately find what you really want. Once you find your truest desire, and don't stop. Don't go like, oh yeah, but I want this. But why? Because I want this. But why? Because then that. But why do you want that? Da, da, da. Get to the core of, okay, what is it that I really desire? Why am I really here? Find that quality and it will always be a quality. It will never be a thing or object or circumstance or project or result or achievement. It will always be a quality. The final answer to what do I truly desire will be a quality a particular frequency of consciousness that you wish to immediately, directly, and completely experience. If you get to the answer of it, you're already starting to pluck the strings of that frequency. The moment you hit the point of, that's what I want, you're already playing that frequency. You're already becoming it. Does that make sense? So ask yourself, what do you really desire? Don't be fooled by your mind's associations, which are many, 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 many. So, cut to the core of it, and at the core of it, you'll find both your question and your question answer.